minute I heard this news, the first thought came to my mind is, you know, Marvels and DC, Avengers and Justice League getting together to fight a common enemy. <laughs> This brings it to almost half the planet, because half the planet has a phone that runs either iOS or Android. So almost instantaneously, we have this potential global solution. Now, and that sounds great. The challenge is the fact that Bluetooth is not super precise. The problem is everything is hackable. It, it is, I mean, in the world of cybersecurity, there is no perfect system. Uh, you can add to the top of that one is the uh, Bluetooth itself. Yes, it's encrypted, but at the same time, you can have, have uh, you know, false positive. You, you're receiving weak signals from different places. The plan for Google and Apple is to, in May, start allowing interoperability between iOS and Android devices and to allow public health authorities to build apps on top of those systems. Then, in later months, the two companies will build broader-based tracing platforms within the operating system, but all those plans depend upon users opting in. It's a very difficult uh, civil liberties kind of discussion that's going on in a privacy discussion. But I think there's no question in my mind that after this all starts to play out, other questions will start to be raised about how phones are being used or potentially could be misused in ways that people are not going to care for. You have to remember, too, is we just came from 2018 and 2019 with tech companies themselves being actually, uh, you know, uh, at the middle of a big scandals about, you know, selling privacy, you know, selling all the information. Now you are bringing them to the picture saying that, those people are going to help you. This is the opportunity to show uh, the users and society that we can help. We know how to do it. And now we would like to show you that. How can we help you? Jim Rogers in Washington for us. Who inside, uh, inside the White House do we know has tested positive now for coronavirus? Hi, Farah. We're getting a note from the White House that it is a personal valet to the president. The valets are kind of an elite military unit that work very closely alongside the president uh, and the, the president's family members. And the note from the White House uh, essentially says, we were recently notified that a member of the United States military who works on the campus has tested positive for the coronavirus. The president and the vice president have since tested negative for the virus, and they remain in great health. But this does raise questions and concerns, given that we know how long it takes for this virus to incubate inside the body and that you can test negative one day but potentially still have that virus uh, inside of you. It's worth noting the president uh, was just on a trip in Arizona earlier this week touring a mask at the Honeywell facility uh, where he wasn't wearing a mask. There were no people around him uh, wearing a face covering either. So this is kind of raising questions and concerns inside the White House that, uh, that the president's health could potentially be put at risk here. But it's also uh, raising questions given the fact that the president and vice president often work very closely with each other, uh, what would be to happen if both of them were to fall ill? These are things that we're following right now. Mm, yeah, I imagine. Uh, in, speaking of Arizona and other states, there are several that are reopening despite uh, failing to meet guidelines set out by the White House. Talk us through that and where. Well, so the CDC and the White House had put these guidelines out a month ago that it had a number of different criteria that you had to meet in each of these three phases just to be able to reopen the very beginnings of your economies. No states have even come close to step one for phase one. That was the gated criteria that showed a 14-day downward trend in reported cases and an ability for hospitals to be treating patients at pre-pandemic levels. At least 10 states haven't come close to that right now, yet we have 43 states... Uh, 
uh, by the end of this coming weekend that will either be partially opened or fully reopened and have relaxed most of their stay at home or safer at home orders. And this is a growing health concern now and a growing concern for health experts and for epidemiologists who say that given the number of daily confirmed cases across the country right now, which average around 25,000, uh, this allows for an increased possibility for this virus to continue to spread as we see people cramming onto beaches and packing small businesses uh, around the country. Uh, the average death toll right now in the U.S. Uh, sits between 2,000 and 2,500, and models just earlier this week had predicted that we could be reaching a death toll of 3,000 per day by June, uh, and that's where the fear for these health experts come, that if, the mo if more people start to gather around each other as these states reopen, we run the risk of seeing these models actually come true far earlier than they were expected to. Especially if the testing isn't there, right? Especially if the testing, the contract tracing, if that's all not there uh, as it should be, that's the big concern. Um, now, we've seen uh, President Trump shift his, his task force, so to speak, from uh, the coronavirus and from the health angle to the economic angle, and that's why, uh, that's why we're seeing states reopen. And there are new job numbers today just to show us what the economy is like right now in the United States. What's the latest, Reggie? Yeah, so the weekly jobs report out today shows that 3.2 million or just about 3.2 million Americans filed for first-time unemployment claims last week. Uh, tomorrow's jobs report for April will show uh, roughly 20 million Americans out of work for the month. But since March now, we're looking at roughly 33 or 34 million Americans who have lost their job because of uh, the COVID-19 outbreak around the U.S. That works out to about 90% of the population of Canada without a job right now. And this is a part of that real push and that broad shift in messaging when it comes to the White House uh, and the changing roster of their task force in order to focus on the economy because the president can't ride a message of medical advice when there is a consistent and persistent push that reopening economies is simply going to do more harm. The president needs to be able to say that he's taking any opportunity he can to build things up. There is a growing push, a growing surge of Americans who have been uh, protesting outside of state capitals trying to get their governors to reopen economies. That's why we're seeing this increased push within the Trump administration. Uh, but the president as well simply says that he, he doesn't want to see the country locked down for years. That was never going to be a possibility down here. But epidemiologists and, and health experts, including Dr. Burks and Dr. Fauci, have been saying for weeks now, if you go too quickly, there is a risk that those economies will have to shut down a second time again, throwing potentially millions of more people out of work. But also, that's going to cost states that are already losing billions of dollars right now in lost income and lost revenue with the amount of businesses that are closed. And we're hearing that state budgets are so tight right now that there are going to be hundreds of millions of dollars cut to education within the next couple of months before kids even go back to school if kids are able to go back to school. This is a very uh, a virus that still has a lot of confusion left to it uh, and that simply is being kind of uh, expanded on right now by the fact that the president is pushing for an economic recovery despite the fact that there is no health recovery yet. Reggie, let's uh, focus on one specific state, and that's New York City. There's a report that links outbreaks across the U.S. Uh, to uh, not a state, to a city, to New York City. Yeah, so geneticists have seen that uh, New York City really is uh, a cause of the spread around the country. There were outbreaks across Louisiana and Florida and Georgia, along with Arizona and some states along the West Coast, where they've been able to trace the origins of the virus or the outbreaks in those states back to New York City. And that's simply because at the very beginning of this outbreak, state leaders were simply too slow to act to be able to stop the spread. Uh, so given the fact that New York was such a hot spot on this, uh, with, with the virus being able to be traced back to Europe and eventually traced back to uh, to China, uh, they say that because of that slow action, the virus spread significantly faster than it would have if there were measures in place. Now, that's not to say that Washington State didn't also play a role in this. Uh, that initial outbreak in Seattle did uh, uh, get traced uh, to outbreaks in about a half a dozen other states, and we know that Washington's uh, original outbreak kind of was on a skip-stop journey from Wuhan province right into America, but it is worth noting here that geneticists and, uh, and health experts say even if New York had locked itself down earlier, 
the virus simply would have continued to spread around the United States, but possibly at a lower level. It also speaks to what epidemiologists have been saying for weeks now, is that these viruses live in silent hotspots around the country. So as we see numbers in New York continue to decline, we're seeing the rest of the country continue to, uh, to push an increase in their case numbers. Uh, and that likely could be the story now for weeks, if not months to come. And, you know, with, with so many crises, we see these crises that it's, you know, the vulnerable populations that are being the hardest hit. We're also seeing that uh, across the United States. So that's something we're watching. Thanks for that, Reg. At a park and ride on the outskirts of Salisbury, soldiers are testing for COVID-19. This is the first of 96 Ministry of Defence mobile units being deployed in the coming weeks. One of these units is designed to carry enough test kits for 500 tests a day, but by virtue of the nature of a mobile testing unit, it may well have to move to a number of different locations in one day. So that isn't specifically the target, but it has the capacity to carry that. We would expect realistically to get about 300 tests done in one day, and we know that we can deliver about 50 tests in one hour quite comfortably. These units can be set up in as little as 20 minutes. Those needing a test first check in with a soldier at the entrance to this car park. They're then told to drive around. You can see there's a couple of tents at the back. That's where they pick up the tests. They're handed to them through the driver's window. If there's any problems, they're told to put their hazards on and they'll come and help. Once the test is done, they drop it off to the soldiers at the gazebo over there. As you can see, there's not much to it, and that really is the whole point. These are mobile rapid response units. If I could... Uh some of these folks we know, they're celebrities in their own right. They're the biggest business people, the greatest retailers anywhere in the world. And one of them is Doug McMillan from Walmart. And I'd like to have Doug, if you would, say a few words, wherever you may be. Good, Doug, please. When we got the call yesterday from the White House, we were eager to do our part to help serve the country. And given what we're facing, that's certainly important to do. We should all be doing that. So we've been asked to make portions of our parking lot available in select locations in the beginning and scaling over time as supply increases so that people can experience the drive-through experience that the president described. We'll stay involved and do everything we can from a supply chain point of view to be of assistance. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Appreciate it very much. 2,000 cases of coronavirus and at least 50 deaths. President Trump has declared a state of emergency and early this morning the House passed a major spending package to help Americans impacted by the crisis. Joy Benedict has more on the federal response. To unleash the full power of the federal government in this effort today, I am officially declaring a national emergency. That declaration unlocks $50 billion in federal funding for states and territories to deal with the growing pandemic of the coronavirus. Americans are the strongest and most resilient people on earth. And in the coming weeks, we will all have to make changes and sacrifices, but these short-term sacrifices will produce long-term gain. Speaking from the road through testing site is set to open in North Las Vegas. Testing will take place in the parking lot of Walmart on Craig Road near Clayton Street. Appointments are available on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays from 7 to 9 a.m. You must have an appointment in order to get tested. Okay, so basically what I wanted to show was, um, in the other video, I wanted to show everyone about what was going on with the cattle, the milk, um, they're having to euthanize their cattle, they're wanting all the milk dumped, they're wanting all the farmers to get rid of their chickens, they're wanting everything killed off, so we have to only solely rely on the government to feed or anything. Um, I showed you, um, a lot of articles about what other people are saying, um, they were supposed to, it was supposed to be in three phases and different steps in each phase to reopening, which was supposed, was, which was meant to, um, do massive worldwide testing and it was supposed to test every individual. Um, they said, uh, Trump came out and said the reason they would start the reopening was because they had so many tests that, uh, was provided to them that they would be able to start a mass amount of tests. So, um... The new normal, they said, is health testing temperatures and um, just basically any type of health spots that's going to be testing uh, your health. Um, they're talking about apps checking your temperature. Other apps will be sending um, all of your information and data straight to the cops, your your zip code, your phone number, your address. Um, 
They claim the apps say it is a government organization, um, and it is the COVID Safe app, and other apps are also doing this, are adding the tracking and the tracing to it. And what they are doing is they're just adding it into the um, into their app. So if you get updates and stuff, and everybody just clicks OK, and it just automatically updates with or without your permission sometimes. But what they are doing is they're sending all of this info straight to the cops, and um, the Bluetooth is picking up who you're around on all your phones. And that is part of how they are doing it. That's why I was playing a couple of those clips. Now, another thing that people need to be wary of is the drones are flying over people and scanning them. So not only can they, they are saying that they are scanning people for the virus, that they can, it's called Dragonfly. That's the business that's actually doing this and that's producing the drones. It says it uh, scans for a fever, sneezing, coughing, or any symptoms of the virus whatsoever. But also note that they have changed the facial recognition to where they can now tell who you are with a mask on. So they have completely redone the facial recognition um, technology to where they can tell if you're wearing a mask or not. Um, also, the Walmarts are now demanding that people all wear face masks to shop. I don't know if that's went all 50 states or not. I'm trying to find out. Um, they are setting up the testing sites in the parking lot as well. Trump says that um, Walmart and Walmart and other places such as Target and stuff are being are doing a lot and are helping so much. And the National Guard and the military is sitting at all of these hot spots, the testing sites, and they're setting up at all these places, and it will be military and National Guard. Now, they are trying to um, make it where you cannot carry your guns in any kind of public places, which I showed you that article. And now they have what they call the COVID hotspots, and military will be everywhere testing along with National Guard stating every American must be tested before we are to be fully reopened. In the reopening process, people will be testing in a, ma in a massive amount of people. And using the contact tracing, they claim that is the only way to open everything officially back up. Now, in some places, um, they are making people download a health app, which, can, which is part of the COVID app, I guess. I don't know. I'll have to look at more into that. But you must... Um, be able to get a green bar of health it's a scan bar like a barcode and whenever you go to a place you have to show them and it scans and shows that it's green which means you're okay and that you're okay to go in and they come out and they test and they make sure so now they're they're saying that there is three t's to open and it's testing tracing and treatment so just know that all of this stuff is happening. They're also saying that the vaccine um, will be coming a lot faster and more quickly than we ever thought. They're also saying they think that it will become a chest piece. And I told you last night about the throat, the thing that you put on your throat. So um, they're saying that it could become a chest piece. A lot of places are talking about that. Uh, mass vac. Um, they're saying that they already have the mass uh, vaccination campaign already planned out, where they're going to start, how they're going to carry it out, and how what kind of sections and sectors they're going to be going to, what counties, what states, um, the cities. Um, as you heard, that they believe that New York was the first place to do it, um, to kind of people from New York kind of went everywhere and it kind of just spread. So they are saying that New York may have been one of the biggest places, you know, that had it, but now it's more everywhere else. So Bill Gates is demanding the mass surveillance. We all knew this. So the surveillance is already up, and it's been up for a very long time. If you have seen any amount of TV, there is mass amounts of commercials showing you that there is surveillance everywhere. And um, it says that America needs to make sure that... We all do as we are told, and we are working with um, with scientists and other specialists to plan a safe, staged path to a national rollout. So there's a lot of stuff going on. There will be new measures put into the airports. I think they've already started this. So whenever you get off of the airplane, or maybe it's before you go on your flight, I'm not sure, but you will provide them with the phone number. 
and they will then call that phone number right there with you there to see if it's the right number and make sure it's, you know, correct. And then they will call your hotel to make sure you have a reservation and a room is there and is in your name. Or if you are saying you are going home, then they will try to match the address and make sure it is correct with the government and with the city and everything. So we have all of that as well. This is a huge thing right now. I know a lot of people think that we're going... You know, we're reopening and everything is fine, but it's really not. There's people lined up for two to three miles at food banks taking food because people right now don't have food stamps or have any kind of income. And so that's to, that's taking away from already the homeless people that need to eat as well. So just keep everything in mind, guys. And um, I'll try to come live here in a few minutes and let y'all know what's going on. It'll probably be maybe an hour, an hour and a half, maybe two hours, and then I'll be live with y'all and we'll talk about all of this stuff, not to mention the fires that's been happening, the flooding, the earthquakes, the tornadoes, the mass amounts of storms, um, all of the signs that are here, and we'll go over every bit of this, okay? So, um... May God bless you. Stop looking down. Start looking up. And I will talk to y'all here in a little bit.